slide or a Glock, which is very short. Mm -hmm. And we offer this for uh, X300 and T. On there, it takes clips, loops, and what have you. Mm -hmm. And we offer it an inside the waistband version. And we offer it in an outside the waistband version. The outside the waistband version comes with uh, screws and posts and washers here because we don't want the um, shot cord when you're wearing it outside the waistband. So we made that more robust and uh, we deleted the provisions for loops and clips so that you don't have quite as much uh, exposed holster here, exposed gun uh, with all the holes in the holster and uh, the all the... Um, Hardware standoffs for the uh, outside the waistband hardware are taller and more pronounced, so, so you can uh, get in there better. They're on both sides. It comes with a tech lock, but you can attach this to any Safari Land G code blade tech uh, hardware you have handy. So it'll fit whatever you got. Yeah, and I, I did just get one of the uh, outside the waistband floodlights this year. Um, <laughs> re really, is there a gun that this doesn't fit? <laughs> um, That'll take a light. It's not great for fn 57s sevens ah. um there are some really big hks that require an ad, like a, a a rail adapter to make them work and those start to hit the upper limits of what these holsters are capable of but i've seen someone take a uh fn 45 tactical with a, an osprey suppressor and put it in one of these that's awesome. Which happens to be exactly the right kind of square profile to fit out the end of the holster. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, you can you can run these with a uh, the right shape suppressor too. Awesome. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Well, next let's uh, let's get into something that I, I it's it's a, a little more unique, and I love it. And that's that's the flex. Okay, so. We're going to preface this right off the bat by saying this is weird. It's not for everybody, and I never even expected to sell the first 50 of them. Um, I, I was looking at the way uh, people were designing holsters that had mag carriers built into them and what the limitations of that were. So uh, one of the problems is they're not really modular. Two, they don't really move independently of each other very well. Uh, some do, but they kind of uh, are, are more fixed than I think they should be. Um, and you can't really scale them or adjust them. And I was looking at the materials that they were using for things like plate carriers huh? um, and backpacks. And they were doing a lot of stuff with laser-cut Hypalon to reduce the amount of sewing that they had. And I looked at that and I said, I wonder if anyone's done anything with this for an inside the waistband application. And I tried it just to see if it was even possible. And I fully expected to make like one or two of them and go, oh, well, there's the reason that no one's making this. It's because they tried it and it sucked <laughs> and they abandoned it. But it turned out to work actually really well. So the, the Flex is a... I wish we had a brand new one here. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> the Flex is covered in Baron's DNA. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, it's a laser-cut Hypalon sheet to which you can attach pretty much any holster you want and any mag carrier you want, you want and any mag pouch you want and any sheath you, you, you have handy. And uh, you can bolt uh, knife sheaths to it, uh, magazine carriers, we offer an array of uh, uh, elastic pouches that are universal fit for whatever mags or, or pepper spray or flashlights you have. And it allows you to have your an entire EDC of uh, uh, firearm and, and other accessories on one grab-and-go piece that you can uh, drop into your waistband all at once. Each part uh, is kept in the same position but moves and flexes with your body. Uh, you can set it up so you can tuck your shirt in across the entire thing. Um, and uh, you can have a couple different ones set up for whether or not you've got, you know, your small gun today or, or your jogging or your workout rig uh -huh. or, or, or what have you. And uh, it's uh, scalable and modular. So if you want to upgrade anything at any time, you're not, you don't have to rebuy a whole holster. You can put a new mag pouch on it. You can put a, 
a different uh, uh, carrier in it. You can have a uh, slightly bigger pouch and put a couple medical items in it, like a tourniquet. Mm -hmm. So it adapts to you. It scales to you. It's ultra light. It's breathable. It's comfortable. Mm -hmm. And you're not stuck with any one particular configuration. Yep. So some some of the other stuff I found, you know, one having, you know, I having these items here at first I, I i just wasn't sure how comfortable that would be but i found myself doing like the quick like like touch my body like did it is that is that on I'm like oh yeah, yeah no mag and mag and pepper spray is still there but the other two cool things i found that it did is one because the hypalon's a, a bit tacky it stabilizes the holster a little bit more so it doesn't it doesn't want to slip around as i stand up sit down bend over whatever um, and because I've got this anchor all the way on the other side of my belt, I'm working in conjunction with the other tuck features that are already built into my holster. So I found this concealed better yet by adding on the flex. So even if I didn't have anything attached, I, I might put a flex on the holster just because it helps the holster do its job better. The other thing that this helps with is <clears throat> anyone who's carrying you know, more than just a gun is going to be uh, acutely aware of how different garments are going to require you to adapt to them. So not all of my pants have the belt loops in the same place. Um, and not all of my pants have the same size belt loops. And if you've got a bunch of different things, you've got to put them on in such a way that you're kind of stuck with, you know, you have, you have to work around your belt and you have to work around your belt buckle and you have to work around your pants belt loops. And what this does is it completely frees you from all of that. So you only need to worry about two loops, more uh -huh. or less, and then the rest of the rig just drops into your pants. So if you need to carry a bunch of stuff, especially if you're doing uh, low-profile work, executive protection, plain clothes, what uh -huh. have you, uh, or you just want to be prepared and you can't look super tactical all the time, you know, so like you don't have, you can't like offset your belt buckle to the side so that you know it doesn't print really badly. You can wear this with anything you've got. And it's going to be the same every time you put it on. And you don't have to put on each piece in such a way that accommodates your wardrobe for that day. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, um, it works with just about everything that you have. So if you've got a, a whole mix and match drawer of knife sheaths and, and, and mag pouches and holsters, um, as long as they all more or less use pretty similar hardware, they can bolt right up to that. Oh, you can also, you know, use... It's all cut the same as Molly webbing, for example. Mm -hmm. So if you've got like blue first gear ten, ten speed pouches that are sitting in yep. a drawer, you can rig them up to this. And um, generally speaking, if you're wearing an inside the waistband piece of equipment, it needs to be made. The way it attaches to you is built into the thing itself. So uh, it will be molded for a certain clip, and the thing will ride and attach to your belt a certain way. Mm -hmm. This frees you from how the thing is made. So you can attach it to the flex however you want without having to worry about how the thing attaches to your belt. Mm -hmm. So you're not really stuck quite as much with the features that are built into the thing you've bought. So you've, it, it, it frees you from the belt. And instead of having to attach the thing to the belt through a clip or a loop, you can attach it to the flex however you want at whatever ride height, whatever angle, whatever position you want to attach it to. So you can make the whole thing fit your body very specifically. And if if this is still something that seems kind of odd to you, uh, John has set up a, a users group on Facebook for this. So you could do like I did and just request to join the group and just lurk on there for a few months just to see how people are using this and what they're doing. And there's a lot of really, really creative oh, ways some yeah. people have used this, this thing. When I talk about, you know, having a product that's more like a sandbox, this is this is like totally open-ended. Mm -hmm. um, when I made the first few of these, they didn't ship with any instructions at all. And I was like, I wonder if that's going to be a problem. I put out a video on uh, the guidelines for how to attach things to it but without any kind of like, here's how you're supposed to set it up. Mm -hmm. And the creativity that people showed with, you know, it's, the thing itself isn't a solution. It's a place to go for making your own solutions. And there's a guy in the Filster Flex users group who took like a half a dozen of these and then all of the little um, plastic cummerbund tubes for mm -hmm. like a, a plate carrier mm -hmm. and rigged them up into a 360 degree inside the waistband setup. 
And I know that's not for everybody, but also he does stuff that's, that everybody doesn't do. Yep. <laughs> so uh, uh, he, it was really interesting to see what what people were coming up with. Uh, and if if you're on the fence about it, you know, you, it's definitely not for everyone. And so I'm not going to say, oh, you're not taking concealed carry seriously if you don't own one of these. I mean, it's it's on a you know per need basis. But if you want to check out the Filster Flex users group and see the wild things that people are doing with this and concealing in like mm-hmm. a t-shirt definitely check it out so you know if you're a little frustrated by what you think the limits of what are possible uh there's there's a, a, a whole new undiscovered horizon on, yep. on there <laughs> absolutely so we're talking with john from filster Mark, do we have any new comments, questions, concerns coming yeah, up? Yeah, it was, you know, good news for everybody. We had some technical difficulties at the beginning, and we've now got everything sorted out and have quite some time, but I don't think people got to hear that they should post their comments down in the, you know, the comment section, either Facebook mm-hmm. or Instagram. We'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, there's this gal here, Sarah K. Hopman. Do we know her? <laughs> <laughs> she I think apparently so. also lurks on the Flex group. Uh, people are incredibly creative there. That's one thing to note. So definitely post your comments. And uh, I'd love to hear about the medical stuff, man, because oh, I've yeah. got to be honest with you. I've worked with a lot of holster companies, but never seen anything like that before. All right. We got to oil your chair, dude. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, a, we're a poorly oiled machine. <laughs> yeah, next time. All right. Okay, so let's start at the very, very beginning here. Okay, so uh, let's backtrack all the way. So of the things that will kill you before you can get to the hospital that are preventable, uh, major hemorrhage is the the top one. Bleeding out is the thing that will uh, is is the leading cause of preventable uh, pre-hospital trauma death. Mm-hmm. So, if you can do something to stop bleeding before the ambulance arrives, and <clears throat> although the statistics might have changed recently uh, as a result of the unpleasantness. Um, for most people living in uh, a pretty built-up area, ambulance time, response time is minutes. Mm-hmm. But you don't necessarily have minutes, right? So uh, one of the things – this wasn't quite as common when we started making the flat pack, but it's become a lot more prevalent over the years – is carrying a tourniquet in your EDC, a CAT, a soft TY, an RMT. Uh, uh, the, 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 the committee just uh, – I think in the past year has increased the number of tourniquets that they recommend mm-hmm. uh, to include a lot of really good stuff. Um, three of the uh, recommended tourniquets are available on our website. Yep. Uh, uh, CATS, uh, soft T wides and the uh, ratcheting medical tourniquet uh, are all really great options. And the flat pack allows you to flat fold a tourniquet as thinly as you possibly can, reducing the uh, overall profile of it and uh, attach it to a uh, slim carrier. Now that's a lot of people I see, they've rubber banded it on there. But in the event that you are operating this tourniquet with one hand, the rubber bands become a lot more difficult to deal with. Mm-hmm. Or, or if it comes in a pouch, the pouch or the rubber bands will you know, crush the tourniquet down and it'll not be as flat as it possibly could be. Uh, so what we did actually, the, the long story is that back when I was in uh, Philly, one of the uh, cops who worked in our district was also a, uh, a, a medic, and he came by, and he's like, well, you know, they issue us these soft tee wides, but when I'm working plain clothes, all I can really do is, like, rubber band it up and stick it in my pocket, and that comes with all these problems. It doesn't stay as flat and as thin as it could be. I'm stuck with manipulating these rubber bands two-handed. Mm-hmm. Uh, what can we do about that? So I made a little piece of uh, kydex with some shock cord in it and essentially strapped it down to a little backboard that would keep it flat and it you know flattens the tourniquet instead of crushing the tourniquet and with these little tabs you can pop those off 
easily uh, one-handed hmm. to uh, get to your tourniquet and deploy it. And we put a couple little belt loops on it. You can carry it on your belt, or you can take those loops off and carry it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, have it take up less space in a bag, and uh, it's adjustable for retention as well, so you can tighten it down as much as you need to. It'll fit on a plate carrier if you've got one. It'll fit on your backpack straps. Basically, anywhere that you could want to have a tourniquet handy, this will go, and it will keep it uh, nice and flat. Mm -hmm. And it works with all the popular tourniquets. Now, in addition to a tourniquet, you might want to carry some other options for bleeding control, like uh, gauze and hemostatics and gloves and whatnot. So we made the pocket emergency wallet. This one's got, you put some something different in here, didn't you? Uh, no, oh. that, that's one I took out of the, just out of, fresh out of the packaging. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, gotcha. So uh, the uh, pocket emergency wallet is a multi-compartment elastic sleeve that takes your... Um, Essential medical gear, like extra gauze, gloves, or what have you. You can buy an empty one and roll your own, put your own items in it, depending on what you want to carry. But if you want to augment your tourniquet with a little bit more of a blowout kit, you can throw a chest seal in here, you can throw mm -hmm. a hemostatics, uh, you can throw a, a, a mini compression dressing in here so that you've got more stuff on hand. And this will fit in a cargo pocket. Uh, depending on how you pack it and with what contents, you can even put it in your back pocket or your jacket pocket or what have you, uh, uh, and keep these with you at all times so that you've got more handy, low-profile low profile items to uh, aid you in the uh, prevention of major hemorrhage prior to an ambulance showing up. You never know how far away your car is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be in a venue and your car's, you know, somewhere in some parking lot, uh, you know, a quarter mile away. You don't want to leave your medical gear in your car. Mm -hmm. And you can take your medical gear everywhere that you can't take your gun. There's nowhere that's going to kick you out for having med gear. You can take it on a plane, in a foreign country, into any concert or sporting event or festival. And if you've got to walk a long way, not like we've got concerts anymore, yeah, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but hypothetically, when the world comes back to normal, right, and you're going to festivals and, 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 and fairs and concerts and stuff, and you're going to be away from your vehicle, you can have these items with you, and they'll go through any checkpoint and any screening, and uh, you can have your essential medical gear on hand so you're not stuck trying to make do with a T-shirt and a belt mm -hmm. if something happens. Yeah, I, I got to just say, I this was my first of your products that I purchased, and I swear to you that thing is ready-made to go in any range bag in the world. I now carry a full medical kit or a full blowout kit in my three-gun gear that I really didn't have access to before. Huh? I mean, it was like everything you'd ever buy was too big or too whatever. Yeah. You, you know, had a lot of great toys in there, which is excellent, but frankly, all we need to do is stabilize for a car to get there, you know. For, yeah. And it was just so huge, huge up for me was was having that stuff available and it literally it fits in my equipment like like it was meant to go there it's fantastic yeah and the and the other thing about these is that you can get blowout kits and typically they'll come vacuum sealed in a plastic bag and that vacuum sealed brick of medical gear is going to require both of your hands to open it mm -hmm. um it's never going to change shape and get softer or anything because it's a vacuum sealed little you know, like a brick of medical gear. So it's harder to pocket. You know, it's it's harder on you when you're wearing it in your pocket. It's going to crinkle. It's going to make noise. It's going to poke you with its corners. Everything in this you can remove uh, one-handed because it's uh, open on both ends. So you can push anything in here through the other side with one hand. So you're not stuck uh, trying to open this uh, little plastic thing. If you use a part out of this, you don't have to get a whole new kit. You can, you know burn through one component and repack it. You can customize this with whatever you want, like H&H uh, uh, &H mini compression dressings, um, uh, the North American mini ch uh, chest seals are good. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a bunch of stuff on the website too. Um, we I have four Band-Aids in mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you can uh, scale it up, scale it down for whatever you need. Um, if you don't want to run extra gauze, you can take that out and put something else in there. So it, it, it adapts to you, and it, uh, the more you sit on it and the more you wear it and the more you carry it around, the softer it gets and your, uh, 
gets a little flatter the more you use it, so you're not stuck with a uh, pointy little brick of plastic in your pocket that you've got to open that package and then open all the subsequent packages inside. And yeah, so like for mine, I just took out the, the compression bandage because um, it just didn't seem as big a priority for me. But I kept the hemostatic gauze and the regular just Curlex, the flat pack, flat pack gauze. So I can still pack wounds. I just can't have something mechanically app- applying pressure without me actively doing it. Um, but now with that, it fits in my back pocket. Yeah, um, and in mine, I use a, a mini compression dressing and the wound clot hemostatic, mm-hmm. which is really thin and does really great work. So you don't need as much gauze. So I plan on packing that into a wound and then compression dressing it. And mm-hmm. that's the end of my kit there. So it's nice and slim. Yep. And it's got, I don't know if it got, got on camera, but it's got a nice, just one channel here. So you've got gloves in here as well, just packed along the side. Yeah. And yeah. you can take those out and you can put a Sharpie in there. You can put an airway in there if you want. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's another f- tool that provides uh, some open-ended solutions. Solutions for you. Yeah, I've been I've been carrying a gun now for seven years. I've deployed my flashlight 15, 20 times. Yep. My medical kit three, four times significant things, and my gun exactly zero times. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, people, people <laughs> hurt themselves and each other by accident at a rate yeah. that completely dwarfs violence. Mm-hmm. Like the chances. Like I was 10, 15 minutes late to this because I missed a car car accident by this much mm. like we were stopped maybe 25 yards from the car accident waiting for the police to clear the scene and it was a rough one there was like no more front end of this car and uh every i can't i can't even count how many car accidents i've seen mm-hmm. or how many people i've seen uh cut themselves at work or something like that you know like People are really good at hurting themselves by accident. Like that's yep. that's m- most of how we hurt ourselves. Mm-hmm. Cool. Do we have any questions that are coming in yet? We don't. And okay. So <laughs> it's because we cool. we're doing a great job of answering. Yeah, them. we're that's... answering them all. I, I actually do think we should help uh, Corey, who asked earlier about the 509 Pro Series holster. Mm-hmm. If we could just real quick hit that again for him, there's a possibility that got missed um, in the technical difficulties. Is okay. there plans for the Pro for the 509? We would like to. It's not a matter of desire. It's a matter of, of uh, economics and timing and planning. Yeah, and got we've that. got a bunch of really big projects to get through that have us swamped through the rest of the year, we were not planning on uh, having an an entire summer quarter of panic buying. Um, That has thrown a rent. Like, we thought, you know, we had a development schedule that was based on the uh, uh, growth that we had predicted based on 2019, not based on uh, global worldwide panic and uh, uh, domestic ongoing crisis Mm -hmm. so our production has had to push a couple of our development projects a little later than we wanted to go so for 2020 you can expect a new product line of holster that you've never seen before that we are working on that should be ready this summer and in terms of expanding the fits of existing product lines we are going to have a p365 uh, MMP Shield and MMP 2.0 Pro Series for 2020, and everything else is going to be kind of up in the air for 2021. If we can make it through this year and have those things done, I will be thrilled. Yeah. And if we don't choke on production when we go to launch new stuff, that would also be amazing because mm-hmm. uh, s- scaling was not what we had. A- we didn't account for any of this. Yeah, how did you? <laughs> no, it's been like... There's a lot of dark circles under a lot of eyes in the firearm industry right now, that's for damn sure. Every, everyone I talk to is like, hey, so how's business? It's great. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. I know. It's great. I'd really like to, you know... Breathe. Breathe again. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, was on the, I was on the phone with a, a pretty famous newscaster here locally earlier today, and his question to me was, well, um, you guys must be loving this. And I'm like, this is the third panic buy I've been through in the years I've been really this involved in the firearms industry. There's nothing fun about this. It's, I mean, it's great. There's some income and there's some things going on. But it's like you look at the upset that it's going to cause downrange in business. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can't develop what you want to develop this year or whatever. You don't have the time to do anything new. You've just got to, like, focus on 
um, answering the phone like every five seconds and you know right or, or there's the, the musical chairs aspect of it yes. it's like okay we've sold out let's get more inventory in we've sold out we'll get more inventory yes. we've yep. sold out we'll buy more inventory yep. into a place where now it's saturated and we're all just stuck with no more chairs totally you know mm-hmm. or yeah. like you, you, you're stuck with the it's like that definitely hurt some companies a couple years ago where where they said, "Oh my God, panic buying!" I think it was at the 2016 election, and everyone sure. thought uh, uh, Hillary was going to win. Uh-huh. So they're like, "Let's ramp up production in case she wins." And then they're just sitting there on all this inventory because yeah. it, it wasn't the the panic they thought. There it was were a lot be. of inexpensive uh, rifles transferred in bankruptcies that next year. That's yep. for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, really fascinating. I the um, we got some. Let's see, Corey said, "Totally understand." He thanks for the um, hopes to see you guys in some classes soon. Yeah. Um, Sarah Kate did not have global pandemic on her bingo card. <laughs> um, there's definitely uh, waiting on that shield, which I personally that's what yep. I've been carrying forever. I just replaced mine mm-hmm. this this year. Um, I got caught without a defensive handgun uh, at the end of the world. So yeah, oops, right? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, but you know, and I don't think people get is like like companies like Glock, for example, were in the middle of a generational change in their firearms when this happened. Yeah, I mean, there's some like massive destabilization in the process, in right? The- and and it's hard to be flexible because you know you plan these things years in advance. Like we've had basically all the hardware molds done for this new thing that we're working on since January and immediately after shot show, everything just goes nuts. And we're like, okay. So we had planned to get every, you know, everything launched in the first quarter. Like we're like, okay, we're on track. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's going to be great. And then we'll just ride out the rest of the year with a, a full stable of new products. And now it's like, we completely underestimated how many, pro series we should launch with we got that number wrong and then we're on the back foot to restock perpetually and what we don't want to do is get into the new product and say okay we're gonna we're gonna make a couple thousand of these and and and, and you know uh, <laughs> and then sell five of them you know mm-hmm. so totally it, there's all that uncertainty so there is no metric for what's going on it's, no. it's just your best guess and plod forward we're gonna r- roll roll the dice and hope we hope we get a critical hit <laughs> yeah really great yes. <laughs> baron show off some of that i was looking at your that that kit you got right there in your hand there that's yeah. something that i hadn't i hadn't really seen hit the mark i mean i i think there were some attempts at this you know a while back but this is pretty cool okay so this is the uh flat pack xl so it's basically an evolution on the uh, little flat pack that's made to go in a, a bag or a briefcase. Uh, Baron has his set up here with a bunch of uh, range-related stuff, but you can put all the, all the medical you could possibly want on there. So you've got, uh, you could do tourniquets, compression dressing, hemostatic gauze, gloves, shears, or, or, or what have you. And uh, the whole thing is immediately inventoryable, and you can visualize the whole thing. So instead of having a... Uh, med pouch, so where you've got to get into the pouch and then uh, 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 I guess more or less disembowel this whole pouch everywhere to get to the thing that you want, which you then have to unwrap. You can observe the entire thing, uh, select the thing you want, and it comes out immediately. Mm -hmm. And you can also have multiples of these. So you can have multiple redundant kits that are easy to inventory at a glance. It's got a little... uh, hole at the corner so you can put them all on a, on a carabiner or a keychain or a D-ring of some kind. And you can have pages of them so you can have a different uh, march intervention on each page. And so you can have a larger kit that stacks really flat. Uh, you can hang them up on the wall at your range or your classroom or what have you. Keep them in a drawer. Keep them in a backpack. We keep them in our vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you've got multiple redundant kits, all of which you can inventory at a glance. Um, and uh, they're easy to restock, resupply. Uh, you can uh, have different interventions on each page. Or you can have multiple redundant kits and hand them out. Um, or instead of having one big kit that you need to unpack, you just pull the whole thing out by the D-ring and flip through the pages to get to what you need. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I set it up just because I've seen this is another item that has a user's group. Um, I've seen a lot of people do medical stuff, seen some really interesting ones. Um, one guy took two and then he took 
some of the small flat packs, and he basically made made a book of medical stuff, so he can close it up and keep it kind of protected by the outside of the flat pack. But he can open it up, and he's still got all of the equipment right there. But mm. I set it up with like ab- like absolute range minimums, so you know I got index cards on here because they're a good target. Shot timer, some oil, some writing stuff, and a notebook, like just. You know, with That's this, your range day. Yeah, exactly. This and some ammo in the gun, and I can, you know, I can make a quick, quick trip to the range after work or pre-work or whatever, right? Instead of taking the whole kit to the range, but uh, yeah, just different idea there. But it's another thing that I keep in all of my carry-on too. So mm-hmm. like any backpack that I bring on a plane with me, all your medical stuff goes through the gate with you. That's mm-hmm. not a restriction, and it's good to have on hand. Yeah, I've never, and I've I've flown, you know, a couple couple international flights with medical stuff i've never once even had a sideways glance from anybody having medical gear like that's just not the only question i've ever gotten has been from like the tsa of like what's this and like that's a tourniquet <laughs> yeah and it's like what do you need a tourniquet for because you don't know what one is because yep. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really apparently i'm the only person beyond this point who knows what this is or how to use it so yeah that's interesting. What do you recommend for people? Uh, obviously, the medical side of this. I mean, the holsters are really innovative and great. Um, but you know, for us here at the store, the medical's new, right? That's a, not, not only a new product, but a new segment of products for us, right? What do you recommend? Do you have anyone here local in Minnesota you recommend for training for this stuff, or where would you send people? Eric McKeezer at QSI Training okay. uh, teaches locally, and he'll get you completely squared away on what you need to know for. Uh, this this level of first aid intervention. Oh, mm-hmm. really great. Okay, cool. We got it. We'll get that in the notes, and it'll be on the page at our website. As long as as well as most of these products we've talked about. Um, have we had a chance to go through all the holsters yet? Have we seen kind of everything that's available on the line? Uh, we got a, a couple little ones. We've got the City Special Revolver holster. Okay, cool. Which is my personal favorite. Uh, yeah, this thing this thing's cool. <laughs> so the uh, the J frame and the LCR are the uh, pretty much the two most popular small revolvers for concealed carry and this is another one of the things that i had no idea that we were, were going to be this popular but apparently everyone is like me and carries a tactical revolver all the time so uh we made the city special uh revolver holster which is a lot like the classic but it, it's uh, all the features are kind of smoothed and, and and generalized and ergonomic and it features our tuck strut hardware which helps rotate the grip of the gun inward and uh yeah uh, that's that's pretty much it for the city mm-hmm. special. Uh, mm-hmm. They're they're a great little convenient holster to carry your J frame or your your LCR, and the, uh, they're also ambidextrous, so you can set it up for right or left handed, however you want to carry it. Um, and we've also got the skeleton holster, which is a uh, kind of a, a a step up from just the you know the minimalist holsters that only cover the. The trigger guard. Yeah. Now those are those are great, except for the fact that you have to take the whole thing out of your pants to put the gun back in it. So we added just enough material that uh, the holster will stay open and allow you to reholster the gun mm-hmm. while you're still wearing it. I wouldn't recommend this necessarily as a range holster because the muzzle's exposed, and if you do a lot of shooting, it will get hot and you will notice that. Um, but for grab and go, quick little small comfortable EDC. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a good little minimalist holster for you. Solid. I've been through. I've got. I've got all the the mix, the Phantom, the whatever. I've got all those somewhere in a drawer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seemed like a really great idea. <laughs> yeah, I find that you need a little bit more than just a trigger guard to make it really work as a holster. Yeah, totally. I got. We have a. You know, we haven't gotten a lot of questions, but man, we've gotten a lot of comments, right? So I just awesome. uh, Pro Series is life changing. Enough said. That's awesome. pretty high praise. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Checking into the Coliseum was fun with a TQ and a trauma pack. I, I <laughs> yeah. love to hear more about that, Ryan. A lot of dudes in the Coliseum could have totally used that. Yes, that's right. A couple millennia ago. Yeah, just a quick 20-minute adventure, he says. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> really great. <laughs> really funny. I uh, Let's see what else we got. It's just lots of really great. It seems like you know, you've got a very devoted following. Most of these are coming off of your page. It's really remarkable. Oh, that's well awesome. Done. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Yeah, really cool. So, what's what's next? I mean, you've told us about some of the products. Do you guys? What are your what are the long term aspirations for this company? Is that, I'm just curious. That's that's a 
big question. It is a big question. It's a big question. Can we talk about one more product first? Yeah, let's do product. <laughs> just, let, that'll that'll buy you some time. Let, <laughs> let, let, let me just pull this trap door. I'm, yeah, I'm no. Shoot, shoot so as you're pulling that up, ring into the floor. Yeah, as you're pulling that up, the reason I ask is because, like, look, uh, you know, we are there's a, there are a lot of companies that came up. Uh, you know what five six seven years ago in the you know kydex industry in the holster industry and they're not standing around anymore there's only a few left of that group right well scaling is really hard it is it's 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 it's, scaling will hurt businesses like ours more than having no customers i i don't know anybody who has run out of customers yeah making holsters but growing the business is what's difficult because yep. it's hard to scale the process. A lot of people were doing them largely by hand, and so in, to make more holsters, you need more employees. Yep. And the busier you get, the bigger your business has to get, so your profit margin isn't growing proportionally. So, Correct. like, there's there's some there's a there's a phenomenon that I refer to as the holster treadmill, <laughs> where you're you're making custom holsters, and the you know your, your business has to grow in proportion to your backlog so you're never really getting ahead and yep. then the, the being stuck on that treadmill uh reduces the amount of development you can do so all you can sort of if you've got like a 16 week backlog for for a certain product how do you launch a new product when you've got 16 weeks of customers who are buying the old product and, don't, and won't and are going to want to switch to the new one. Like, what does this do to your business? Like, mm-hmm. you're you're stuck making the same product, and that has been a phenomenon which I think has hurt a lot of holster companies. Yep. Um, and you know, big and small, they'll make a leap to something else. They'll go, okay, well, we got to get ahead of this. We got to reform our process. We got to do something like injection mold. So they'll capitalize the injection mold, and they'll spend a lot of money to give up being a nimble company where you can invent something new every day if you've got enough free time to do it. So, you, you know, the, the upside of working in this material is that it's pretty easy to generate a new product if you can make the mold for it, right? And it's a matter of getting the time to do that. So if you've got the time to do that, you can generate a new product um, and grow and develop if you can have like a parallel treadmill running. Um, sure. And uh, so you'll jump into injection molding, but it's such an enormous expense that you are kind of stuck with it for a long time. You have to get that cost to return to you. Yep. Uh, and so it's hard to scale in that direction as, as well. So, you know, you give up the, the nimbleness of being able to whip up a new holster or whip up a new design the minute that you've got some free time to do it in exchange for the volume and the margin that you get out of injection molding. Now you can make a thousand holsters with one employee instead of, you know, a thousand holsters with 50 employees or whatever, or 20 or whatever you've got. So that's, that's a hard balance to strike. So our immediate short term goals for the next year are to scale responsibly and continue to innovate. And part of part of how we do that is we've got a, a diversified line of products. So we're not making everything under one roof. And so every new product line doesn't require us to incur the cost of vertically integrating that that um, that production. So we make things like the pocket emergency wallet um, and the flex at uh, so shops who do that contract work for us. Yep. So. We don't need to insource that to scale that. The scaling occurs at the vendor side. So we've also branched into um, some injection molding. So some of our products, like the flat pack tourniquet carrier yep. and perfect transition, uh, <laughs> nice. our arc uh, enhanced weapon light switches are injection molded. Mm-hmm. So we've made a, 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 a line of products for Surefire and Streamlight TLR1s and X300s or other X-series lights. You're good. Where you can uh, pop off the old switches and add these customized longer switches. So if you want to activate them easier, if you've got short thumbs, small hands, don't like grip switches, you can improve the ergonomics on the 
uh, switches that come with your light. So these things don't really inqu- require us to add more people in order to scale the production of those things. Yeah. So um, what do we do with the holsters? That's the, that's the next question. Well, we have to keep up with the production demand and not kill ourselves or kill the company to scale to meet the demand. So that's the big challenge uh, mm-hmm. for, for the next year. And uh, we want to keep innovating and staying ahead. And I think the things that we offer in the rest of this year are going to uh, cement that position pretty strongly, hopefully. Um, but I don't want to... Uh, I, want, I want the new products to do really well, but I don't want, I don't want them to do so well that it hurts the business because right. then we can't keep up with it, you know? Yeah. So uh, all of the... All of the vendors that we work with to bring these products to you guys are in positions where they can scale without harming themselves, and they can they can scale responsibly and efficiently, and we're not wrecking the, any of their production capacities yet. So there's, given the current processes and the processes and the current products, there's plenty of capacity, and I think that we can continue to scale at least through next year, maybe even at crisis rates. Hmm. Um, and not get too stuck on the treadmill. Yep. And some of this is going to involve diversifying into new processes. There might be a time where, you know, maybe in the next, you know, 12 months or so, you might see an injection molded holster come from us. Um, the key to doing that is to make sure that it is the same kind of quality and premium product that people expect from the brand and that we're not kind of moving backwards in terms of our customer expectations. So that's something that we'd like to avoid. So that's the big hurdle for that process. Um, and the, the big overarching world domination plan beyond just sort of like surviving the, uh, you know, randomized improbability drive end of the world (laughs) apocalypse. Um, I prefer current climate. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> current current climate. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, is there, is there a button for an, an, an echo effect? So every time I we say current it. climate, yes, it's like I current know. climate. Current climate, <laughs> climate, climate, climate. Um, so what I would really like, so if you look at a company like Safari Land, for example, um, if I wanted to start a police force from scratch and I just had, you know, if I had 10 dudes in street clothes and I was like, we're going to make these guys cops, I can call up a company like Safari Land and have everything delivered, like armor, belts, boots, the works. Like they, they can go from, you know, 10 guys in bathrobes to a completely uniformed and equipped police force in one phone call. Yeah. If I had one overarching goal for Filster, it would be to provide a service like that except for anything low profile. Huh. Like if you wanted to go from zero to a completely fully equipped uh, low profile, low visibility, issuable solution across the board, everything from med to armor to like even complete weapon systems. But that's a much bigger project. That's like a five-year plan. Got it. Very cool. Unfortunately, we lost our friends at Instagram, like yeah. right in there. But we got most of it. So, um, no, it's like I, you. It's really great to see this company. I I didn't know much about before. I've been involved with some other uh, Kydex companies over the years, and um, and it, I asked the question because I've watched them, and there's one left. Oh, it's so it's so difficult. I yeah. Mean, I, I honestly barely got out of that trap. It was a number of years ago that I had uh, picked up like a CNC router and I had an employee working for me and I was trying to like bootstrap scaling. And we had volume, we had backlog, and every time we figured out some way to improve our process, we'd get busier. And so we could like never get ahead. And we went years without developing a new product. Mm-hmm. And uh, in sourcing all of that process was really difficult. And it occurred to me that like, 
I wasn't even like really making holsters. I was like, I wasn't bringing any value to this company anymore. I was standing at the buffing wheel, buffing and assembling holsters. And like, that's, that was you know, you know, running a business, you're stuck in a situation where you've got to chain yourself to the oar, row the ship, whip yourself and beat the drum and be the captain of the ship. And you can't do all of those. And you certainly can't do all of them well. And it occurred to me that like, I was like chained to the oar running this business. And uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, we had sort of come up from basically nothing making holsters together back in the day when all we had was like a couple of YouTube videos. My friend Andrew Henry uh, had a great process, CNC machines, great vacuum forming. And uh, he had a great process, but all the spare capacity. And I said to him, can you help me get out from, from under this? I've got all this demand and no capacity. What if I, you know, I'm, I'm paying someone to run this machine in my shop and we're barely getting ahead. And, you know, the, there was really no way to like control costs. I didn't know exactly how much each piece cost because we were all busy doing so many different things that we could like never really calculate the exact raw cost. I'm like, look, I want to be able to pay X for a holster every single time and not have to worry about uh, covering all the expenses that come with full-time employees and, and how much time gets wasted. Like, I just want to be able to buy the parts from you. And that started the process of outsourcing. And every step I did in that direction, first it went to outsourcing production. And then I did outsourcing distribution. So I work with a company called uh, The Activity Group, Anyone who's ordered from us will be surprised when they're like, Where, what's this package coming from Idaho? <clears throat> the activity group is located in Boise, and they do all of the fulfillment. Anyone who's a dealer who places an order is going to talk to the folks at activity group, and they hold all the inventory. So they manage all the vendors. All I do now is set up the supply. I do the product design, and I establish the supply chain for that product. So then activity group can obtain the products from the suppliers and deliver it all to the customers and the uh, retailers. So I'm not stuck doing the parts of this business to which I add no value. Everyone who adds value to the business is doing their value added part. So I think we got out from under the big scaling problem, but it was just, just barely. Totally. Barely, like we almost didn't make it. Do you have like, any permanent burns? <laughs> you can't see them. They're, yeah. all, they're, they're all inside. Yes. That's so great. All right. Well, we got to wrap this up. I just have one last question. When's the in the waistband holder holster for the SCCY with the Laser Max trigger or Laser Max trigger guard coming? You got that call at least once in your oh, life. God. I guarantee you. Um, <laughs> right now, it's all uh, Canix with all lights. Canix with all lights. <laughs> no. Got yeah. it. Those those dudes are. If someone today yes. started a holster company that only made holsters for Canucks with Olights, they'd probably do okay. They probably would. But, you, but you'd have to be about that and dominate the Google AdWords space for it. That's going to cost and, a nickel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, the highest ROI you can possibly get on Google AdWords right now is... Uh, uh, a Canic Olight holster. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ryan says it has to be left handed as well. Yes. You are just a jerk, Ryan. All right. <laughs> hey, that market is all yours if you want to jump Ryan. into it. There all is yours. nobody in that pool That's right now. That's so great. Well, cool. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. John, any last things you want to plug? Where can people find more of this? Uh, well, if they're watching this, they've probably already found it. Probably. Right? So there, you, you're, we're on Facebook and Instagram. We're Filster. Um, if you are local to the Minneapolis and St. Paul area and you want to check out these products in person, come on down to Arns and Arms, Echo, uh, <laughs> and uh, check these out in, in person and say hi to the good crew here. And say hi to my suppressor for me because it's, <laughs> it's somewhere it's here. Trapped. It's trapped. Outstanding. Hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Y'all have a good night.